The last set of uh, slides I want to show you is on applicator safety. And I don't care if you're spraying a conventional pesticide or an organic pesticide, applicator safety is important. Um, applicator safety re requires you to think. Think about what you're about to do, to plan, and organize what you're doing. Remember, before you use any pesticide, it's important to read the label. Read the label before you purchase it, read the label before you mix it, and read the label before you apply it. That way, you use the product correctly, and you get the best results. So, this is an example of a pesticide label. This partic particular one here is actually a herbicide, but uh, this, it has a sp specific um, statements on here that you need to be responsible for, that you are responsible for. The directions for use tells you how to use that particular product. Precautionary statements. Precautionary statements include precautions to the applicator, precautions to the environment, could be for fish, could be for uh, other livestock or animals or anything else. It's going to have your re-entry interval, restricted entry interval, uh, things on public environmental safety. It's going to have um, the toxicity and all these different things, and it's required that you read this and understand what this is before you apply your product. It's going to relate the toxicity of your family of your pesticides. In the United States, we use three toxicity levels. Toxicity one, two, and three. One is danger, two is warning, three is toxic, slightly toxic, or a caution. If the toxicity of pesticide is listed as a caution, that means that you could probably, in theory, consume an ounce or more of the concentrated product in the package without any risk. Okay? Warning, moderately toxic, you're at risk if you were to consume a teaspoon to two tablespoons. Danger is highly toxic. Now we have a lot of danger chemicals in our own homes. Can you think of any? Bleach is one. Lye for cleaning the stove. You guys, you guys are handling these things all the time. So this is nothing new. Okay, so this is the, these toxicity statements are not just for pesticides, for, the, for all the chemistry we in our, have in our lives. And it's related to what's called the an, uh, toxicity level, which is an LD50 or an LC50. LD50 refers to the lethal to dose required to kill 50% of laboratory animals. Lethal concentration is a lethal concentration. And we also have two kinds of poison. We have acute and chronic. What's the difference in acute, chronic, acute poisoning and chronic poisoning? Acute is a, a large amount at one time where you have a poisoning incident. Chronic is where you're consuming it over a long period of time where you would build it up. For instance, if you were to examine my liver, I would probably be full of mercury because I love tuna and I've been eating tuna since I was two. So that would be an example of chronic poisoning. <laughs> Types of protective equipment that you need to be familiar with. This is what we call PPE or personal protection equipment. It includes gloves, boots, clothing, hat, eye protection, respirators. Familiarize yourselves with all the different products that you could be using. One of my favorite pictures is this man. I stole this off the internet. It's really bad. I, off an advertisement for a lawn care company. Is this man wearing his personal protection equipment? He's wearing it. Well, he is, but it's all tucked in. Is he wearing it wrong? Yes. He's wearing it wrong because the boots are open, gloves are open, and so forth and so forth. No protective eyewear. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. What's that? There's no protective eyewear. No protective eyewear. Well, it's a bad picture. He's, it's hard to see. But he's got his hat, he's got his respirator, he's got his Tyvek, got his gloves, got his boots. Okay. So you need to look to see what PPE is required because the most dangerous time is during handling and mixing not during application. I, you can't, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people mixing product without the proper gear and then putting the gear on to go apply it. 
This is all on the label, which you have to have. So you should observe the precautionary statement that's on the label. Also, handling contaminated clothing is just as dangerous. In other words, most pesticide applicators don't take the clothes home and put it in the family laundry. You need to keep it separate, wash the same day, use a heavy-duty detergent, do a pre-soak, and then, after you've run, if you've run contaminated clothing through the washing machine, you're supposed, you need to run it again clean. Um, when we wash contaminated clothing at my home, we use a combination of bleach, vinegar, and borax. So. Protective equipment such as dust and respirators, they need to be replaced when you have breathing resistance, the filter's damaged, uh, respirator manufacturers say how many times you can use them, at the end of the day, if no other instructions. The pesticide filters, once you open them up out of the package, that is, they're being actively used, whether you've got them on, on your face or not. So if you're not using them, take the filters off, put them in a Ziploc bag and store them, okay? If you're wearing a pesticide filter and you can taste the pesticide, it ain't working. Respirators have to be, meet federal requirements. These are the laws, OSHA and NIOSH. Um, you should only use NIOSH certified respirators. Um, national Health, uh, it's the employer responsibility to provide training, maintenance, and inspection and storage of personal protection equipment. The training requires use a respirator, must receive the training, the handling, fitting, learning how to do the face seal, learning how to um, use it, and also they should use it in a test atmosphere. Tony's Bar. Well, they don't smoke there anymore, so. Uh, respirators, you want a good face seal, beards, sideburns, eyeglasses. If you're using a pest, believe it or not, a respirator requires you to be wearing your dentures. Because if you're not wearing your dentures, and you guys are all laughing because you're younger, you don't have a full, fully developed mouth. And of course, then there's piercings. I added that one later. Respirator maintenance uh, is important. Um, I don't like to share respirators. Inspection procedures include tight conditions. Make sure the parts haven't deteriorated. The worst place to store a respirator, and I see the trucks running up and down the street, they throw the respirator on the dashboard of the truck. It's too hot. Keep it out of the sunlight, keep it out of cold, and don't store your respirators in with the pesticide cabinet. Okay, so applicator risk. Applicator risk during mixing and loading, application cleanup, reentry, and transport. Believe it or not, you have to be a licensed pesticide applicator to do maintenance on pesticide application equipment. Do you have to have your pesticide applicator's license if you own your own facility? Do you have to have your own pesticide applicator's license if you own your own facility? The answer is no, but you have to have a pesticide applicator license if you buy restricted use pesticides. Yeah. But you are still covered by all the laws. If somebody's come in and asked for your pesticide records, you're still required to have those records. No cracks, no leaks, no fil make sure the filters are clean, and take out bad nozzles. No smoking, no eating or drinking when you're handling pesticides. If you were to spill a pesticide on yourself, um, remove the contaminated clothing, wash, and again, don't launder contaminated clothing with the family wash. So where are you most susceptible to exposure? So V-neck, front V-neck shirt is pretty low. And here you can see most of our hands without gloves. So gloves is probably one of the most important things we can do for pesticide safety. Exposure includes dermal, translocation to the skin, oral, you know, getting in your mouth, and are breathing it, of course. <laughs> the uh, parts of your body that are most susceptible uh, include uh, uh, where you have thin skin, you know, ear canal is pretty high, but I want you to notice this, the scrotal area is probably 
uh, one of the highest uh, exposure areas uh, that you can be, be exposed to a pesticide. And you're thinking, well, I'm wearing my pants, but I'm going to show you a picture here in a minute that's going to maybe think, make you think well, twice. You do. I don't wear pants in the greenhouse. You don't wear pants in the greenhouse? <laughs> that is way too much information. I've seen them. Have you ever how to wear your clothes? Am I going to go out over how to wear your clothes? I wasn't planning on doing that too much. I was going to show you some photographs of what happens when you don't wear them properly. So this is a set of slides that was done by Sandra McDonald a number of years ago uh, for an ag um, pesticide applicator workshop and where this, this uh, gentleman is, is working with um, mimicked pesticides that have been laced with a fluorescent molecule. Okay? So here he is, no protective gear, and he's filling the um, pest, uh, pesticide uh, bin on a grain drill. And that's what he looks like with, um, under uh, black light with his exposure to the pesticide dust. So you can see that he's breathing pretty heavy and got it all over himself. So we're going to dress him up in the proper gear. He looks a little better, doesn't he? So still there's a lot of contamination on the clothes, but it's on the clothes and not on his skin. Dual cartridge respirator, this is probably the most common one we use. It's got a fil dust filter here, and on the inside it's got a um, activated charcoal filter. We've got goggles, We've got a hat. And you can see that he's pretty well protected, but he still gets some contamination, but let's see we're on the side of the face. And cotton overalls. Cotton is not one of the better articles of clothing to wear. Handling contaminated hoses with no gloves. Pretty uh, obvious. No gloves. Walking through a field that's been sprayed. Um, these are with the jeans on, this is with the jeans off. I wonder, I asked Sandra about this question. She said, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> and tennis shoes. Protective gear on the feet. One of the things that I lecture my people is closed-toed shoes. I'm not sure if that's the fun, fun Toenail fungus or <laughs> anyway. And then there's always the supervisor that walks into the greenhouse where everybody else is wearing their appropriate appropriate material and the supervisor is the one that's at risk. So 